Hey y'all, welcome to part six. I can't, I've gotten so high I can't do it on one hand. But we're gonna be doing the head installation as well as installing probably the rest of the stuff around the block because we're getting pretty close and things are going pretty smooth. So we got our ARP heads, studs and exhaust studs as well as our head gasket and then the water pump, timing chain kit and oil pump down there. So. A lot of stuff to be installed and then eventually we'll get into the rest of the peripherals around the engine. The first thing we need to do is install the water pump because if you come over here to the service manual it tells you to install the timing chain and guides but if you look here it already has the water pump installed. So we're going to install the water pump first and then go into the timing chain and then the oil pump and front cover assembly. pump is all installed. One thing to note is that these two bolts here are actually slightly longer. That's because the power steering pump bracket will go behind those. So when the sealant all sets up and I'll go around and torque these, I can torque these as well because I have to take these and torque them before we put the pulley on because otherwise I can't get to them. So let's go ahead and put on the timing chain, the guides, and the front cover. is all on not torqued yet just like the water pump because I still have to go through and let all the sealant dry but one thing to note is that a lot of leaking problems from SRs come from this front cover because you know it's gasket maker and it has to seal properly when I was putting this on I noticed that this front cover is actually lower than the deck on that block so what I ended up doing was taking the bottom and pushing it up. And you saw at the end of the time lapse, my roommate put a level on here. You don't really need a level, just any sort of straight edge, but it's a hell of a lot flatter. So it should help seal that. And then on top of that, we'll go ahead and we'll take a little bit. When I say a little bit, I mean a little bit of the sealant and we'll put it all along here as well as on the gasket to help give a good seal. So we hopefully don't have any oil leaks. And I'm an idiot. I just realized I forgot the O-ring. It was sitting here, so I wouldn't forget it, and I did. So now this has to come off. Fantastic. Right here is where the O-ring goes. This is the O-ring where I said, hey, I can't forget to replace this. I almost forgot to, but I can't forget to replace this. Well, it would help if, you know, I, I would actually, you know, replace it and put this in the block. But we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some oil on this and we'll go ahead and get this installed. So front cover's back on, put on the pulley and then the ARP studs. So we'll go ahead and get the gasket and the head on. Let's do it.
you probably saw a struggling there. Uh, the instructions with the ARP studs aren't very clear. It says to install the studs and then install the cylinder head, step five and six. And then it says to lubricate the threads. Well, one, I can't lubricate the threads if they're already inside the head. And then two, I can't get the head on with the studs on because the guide gets in the way. So I'm gonna have to install the studs after installing the head. So hopefully the dowel blocks do their job properly, which I replaced. Alright, now we have the head on and all the studs are in place. So, a little trick to do when installing these nuts is to take them, put them on a pick. That way, you just take them, put your pick inside the Allen, and you can just drop it in place. Just like that. And then, you can go around. You can run them all down, torque them. That way you're not fumbling around trying to drop things in there. It makes that really easy. So let's go ahead and do that and torque all these. And then we'll move on to the next thing, which would be installing the cams, probably, if I'm remembering from the service manual. So let's do it. It's all installed. The one thing that I did was after I did the final torque, because ARP says to torque to 100 foot pounds and three equal steps. So just 30, 66, and then 100. I went around after the final sequence and I just verified it. So after torquing it to 100, I went around and double checked it. I think that one was the only one that moved, but the other ones didn't. But Verifying is always a good way to make sure that you have everything set to the proper torque because everything, since you have 10 bolts here, it's not getting torqued down evenly as much as you would like to try to do it with a sequence, but verifying it is always a good thing to do. So let's go ahead and get those camshafts in. Come Valve train is all pretty much installed. I have to torque these, but I don't like the way an adjustable wrench feels on the cams, so I'm going to go get a wrench for it. If I can find one, hopefully I can. And then we'll go. I got to put this guide on still, but the tensioner. But other than that, she's all in. And once we get these all torqued down and the tension in, we can spin her over and see how she feels. All right, now we got everything torqued. Got the top guide on as well as the tensioner. And you went out and got a 25 mil wrench specifically so I could hold that because the, like I said, the adjustable wrench wasn't working too well. So now we get to move on to the next thing. motors mostly together there's a few things that you didn't see in the time lapse on the other side distributor here coil the control switch or transistor whatever this is 
the thermostat housing in. What I'm about to do now is I'm going to put on the inlet housing here, and then I'm gonna put on the return here. And I'm probably just going to go ahead and reuse the old pipe that I said I wanted to replace, just because I, one, want to go ahead and get this thing back in the car and get it running, and then it's not that hard to take off the intake, and then I can easily get to everything to pull that off and replace it when the new part comes in. So I'm still waiting on that water pipe. So hopefully it doesn't take too long, but like I said, the majority of things I have left around the engine should go together relatively quickly. I still have to put on the oil pan down here. Um, we'll do that tomorrow, but you know, obviously you still have to let all of this, um, all of the new sealant I put on today sit before I torque it. So that includes the valve cover. And then that would also include the oil pan for tomorrow. So, but progress is being made. I still need to put on the exhaust studs as well, which are sitting right there. So progress, progress, progress. Now everything should be finished. Got all of the external stuff on, save for the piping here. I'm gonna to try to outsource new piping. Really, really hope this comes soon. If I have to take it, cause I'm trying to get all of this ready to take it down to a trip down to Tennessee here in about, oh gosh, about a month and a half. So hopefully this comes in by then, but if it doesn't, no big deal. I'm just more worried about getting this in. Hi kitty. I'm more worried about getting this into the car and getting it running. So everything's good. I still have to torque this. And I still have to torque all the stuff with gaskets. I can go ahead and do the water pump with the front cover just because I did those yesterday. And then like I said earlier, tomorrow I'll do oil pan and all that. And then after that, it's probably going to be time to put the clutch on. So, oh yeah, and the studs, the studs are on too. And then there's the best part about putting a motor, which is hearing compression. I love it. I absolutely love it. little update on the motor got the if you can see it oil pan on I mocked up the oil cooler I cleaned it the gaskets right there I bought new ones to replace it so this is just a quick mock-up because I have to wait for those gaskets to come in I've torqued miscellaneous things got the valve cover all torqued up the one thing to note from the service manual is to pay attention to where it tells you to put the gasket maker on the actual valve cover gasket. But got to wait for the gasket maker to dry for the oil pan. And then we can torque that and then put the baffle and the pickup in the other pan on. So she's coming together, coming together good slowly because now we just pretty much have to wait for gasket maker stuff to dry so not too bad 
I'm happy. This is the last bit of the video. I decided to mock up the turbo and the intake and also some mounts and brackets here. So I think it's looking pretty good. I'm really happy with the way she's turning out and I'm excited to see it back in the car. I'll put the link again for this factory service manual in the description. And hopefully next video we'll be putting on the transmission, the transfer, and then possibly putting it back in the car. So if you like what you saw, want to see more, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks.